Hello, my name is Tony Botting, and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. This is the second of a two part tutorial covering a simple pendulum analysis in SOLIDWORKS Motion. In this second part, we'll cover more graphing of results, changing unit systems, exporting data, and changing the results fidelity. We worked out the solutions to angular velocity and angular acceleration here. The symbol theta is used as the angular offset from the vertical. The amplitudes are down here. You can see about 44 degrees per second for angular velocity amplitude and 196 degrees per second squared for the angular acceleration amplitude. So we'll graph these items in SOLIDWORKS Motion. We'll graph the angular velocity. And I'll pull out the Z component. And we're seeing about 44 degrees per second. Now I'll graph the angular acceleration, and you can see the magnitude is about 196 degrees per second squared. You can see the amplitudes agree well with hand calculations. Other useful output includes the energy of the system. We calculated the maximum kinetic energy as the pendulum swings through the bottom. Here's the mass of the bob and the mass moment of inertia. This comes to about 0.21 joules. The maximum potential energy occurs as the bob gains maximum height, so that's just mgh. The potential energy at this point comes to 0.21 joules. In motion, I'll pull down momentum, energy, power. And total kinetic energy, and select the bob. You can see it starts out at zero and reaches a maximum of 0.21 joules. And next we'll graph the potential energy change. And you can see the amplitude is minus 0.21 joules. The software is using the initial position at 10 degrees as the reference for the calculation, so the pendulum loses potential energy as it swings down. Of course, the phase difference in the graphs shows how the kinetic and potential energies are exchanged as the pendulum oscillates. It's really beneficial, of course, to get other output very quickly. For example, we are graphing the horizontal speed of the bob here. So I'll pick linear velocity and the x component. Now I'll do the vertical speed of the bob by selecting the y component. Of course, you may not have the units that you want. In SOLIDWORKS 2012, you can change this from the units tag at the bottom margin of the window. I'll close the graphs, then change the units to inch pound second, then show the graphs, and you can see the linear velocity is now in inches per second. If you right click on the graph, you can export to a comma separated value file, which you can open in Excel. So here we've opened the file and I'll generate a chart. You can customize the charts quite extensively here. Now you might notice the data points on the chart. They are separated by 40 milliseconds. What if you wanted better fidelity in the calculation, say every 20 milliseconds? Well, all you have to do is change the frame rate. If you select the motion study properties, you can see the frames per second is set here at 25. So I'll just double the setting to 50 frames per second. I'll click OK and rerun the calculation. You can see it takes longer to run than before. I'll show the horizontal velocity graph and export that to a CSV file and open it into Excel. In Excel, you can see the time step has been reduced to 20 milliseconds. Here are the Excel graphs side by side. The 25 frame per second output is on the left, and the 50 frame per second output is on the right. You can observe the higher fidelity and smoother curve on the right. In the second part tutorial of SOLIDWORKS Motion, we showed graphing of results, changing unit systems, exporting data, and changing the result fidelity. This is Tony Botting at Go Engineer, and we hope you enjoyed watching the series.